and Akir hope you guys are doing well, and imagine you're having a child in the next couple of years. And with the vast trove of gene editing technologies that have recently surfaced, your doctors make you a surprising proposition. They offer you the ability to customize hair, skin, and eye color, as well as eliminate any pathology, illness, or hereditary infliction that may infirm your baby. However, and more controversially, they also ask you if you want to get rid of things like vision problems, baldness, obesity, or even mental disorders. And as you can imagine, these realities present a much more disquieting dilemma. Do we have an ethical duty behind using genetic modification to ensure a child's success, or are we creating a world in which imperfections become substandard and inequality amongst humans is inherent and downright biological? Let's check it out. Now, before we jump into the ethics of such technology, I think it's really important to understand where we are now. In fact, the concept of tuning gene expression and manipulating base pairs has been around for a few years, and in January of 2013, the Zhang Lab published the first study in editing the human genome of mouse and human cells using CRISPR. More specifically, the tool comes in two parts. The first is an enzyme called Cas9 that cuts DNA, and the second is a guiding RNA sequence that tells Cas9 where to do so. Something to keep in mind here is that of the nearly 6 billion base pairs that make up the human genome, it's often that the Cas9 and guiding RNA sequence actually messes up and finds the wrong base pair. This can result in the wrong gene being edited when it wasn't the intention, but slow improvements in the technology are preventing this reality. Most recently, researchers in China have used CRISPR to edit the genome of human embryos to eliminate heart disorders, and their work has incited much controversy. Weirdly enough, many people People are actually okay with editing the genes of mice or plants because it seems less unnatural than when done to humans. And though I wholeheartedly disagree with that sentiment, I actually understand the concern. This type of technology becomes that much more meaningful when it can affect your loved ones or children. So let's dive into it a bit more. Using CRISPR on humans actually requires something known as IVF, or in vitro fertilization, and it can be a prohibitively expensive procedure for a lot of people. So we enter this crazy narrative where the rich can ensure the biological superiority of their children and the poor are once again put through the ringer. But to understand that, let's focus on the actual unprecedented benefits of using CRISPR. Forget hair or skin color, CRISPR can be revolutionary in eliminating conditions like autism or the potential for cancer. And to think that people could be deprived of such a benefit because of an insurance policy or out-of-pocket premium or simply the inability to afford IVF is downright crazy. Personally, I see the advent of genetic modification going one of two ways. And the first, which is the happy part, is where CRISPR and similar tools become very much like a vaccination 2.0. They can become this pervasive measure to eliminate genetic disease or illness in anyone, and in many ways it becomes our moral obligation to do so. However, that also means that insurance companies, hospitals, free clinics, and even world governments have to get on board. This can't simply become a procedure that's dull out to people willing to pay a pretty penny, but instead an inherent benefit of a healthcare system in an advancing and civilized country. The second development of tools like CRISPR is far more devastating. For those of you that haven't seen the film Gattaca, I actually really, really recommend it. It explores the same concept beautifully, and it contrives this world in which designer babies are standard, and those who weren't privileged enough to have the procedure done are marginalized into a struggling and biologically inferior lower class. For a film made in 1997, it actually got so much right. In fact, it even shows up as a point of reference in research pieces, academic journals, and even videos about technology. Clearly, we find ourselves at an incredibly delicate tipping point, and with good regulation, ethics, and a major stress on the individuality of human life, we can end up on the good side of genetic modification. I hope of a future where disease is non-existent and illness is as correctable as a mistaken stroke of lead on a piece of paper. I just really hope that my optimism doesn't become corrupted by greed, politics, or big business, as Unfortunately, a lot of things are. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.
Thanks for making it this far. Click my links down below to read my Huffington Post articles and follow me on social media when you can. Thanks, guys.